Okay. You All right. Continue. Okay, thank you. We'll go through the roll call then. Um, Lori Bickford. Yes, Your Worship, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Ron Kelly Sparrows. I'm here, Your Worship, thank you. And Craig Bowser. I'm here, Your Worship, thank you. Uh, Becky Goodwin. Yes, I'm here, Your Worship, thank you. Dwayne Acton. I'm here to your worship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dwayne. Uh, Michael Beal. I am still here, your worship. <laughs> uh, Donna Beal. Thank you, your worship. I am here. Uh, Jamie Burke. <clears throat> Thank you, your worship. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Finney. I'm here, Deputy Mayor Aiken. Uh Councillor Butcher. I am here. Thank you. Councillor Black. I'm here, thank you. Councillor Evans. And I am here as well, thanks. Uh, Councillor Michel. I am here, thank you. And Michael Tower. I am here, your worship, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So move, Councillor Michel. Thank you. I'll second, I'll second that, that. Councilor Tower. Okay, thank you, Councilor Tower. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a public presentation to uh, amend the municipal bylaw, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Bickford. Thank you, thank you Your Worship, members of Council. I'm actually going to uh, share my screen just so that you can uh, view the presentation. So as the mayor has indicated, tonight is a public presentation for the municipal plan amendment. Um, this is also going to uh, require a zoning bylaw amendment as well. Uh, essentially what it's doing is the introduction of abattoirs into the industrial designation of the plan. <clears throat> so under the Community Planning Act, council is required to hold a public presentation for uh, any amendment to the municipal plan. Um, and this is a formal announcement of council's intention for the amendment, as well as it sets forth the uh, formal request for writing comments uh, in on the proposed amendment from the public. So to provide a little bit of background on this particular request, um, just to, to give you that general statement again, the municipal plan is the document that the town has adopted that directs the future development of the town. And this is that long-term um, view of how we see the town uh, growing and as well as it uh, provides the general goals of land use within the, the town. Currently, the bylaw does not provide any directive on where abattoirs are to be located within the, in the town boundaries. Um, however, when you review the different designations that are within the plan, the industrial designation is the area which is most uh, suited to this type of use. So currently it talks to uh, the direction of the industrial designation having good highway access for distribution of products and having limited impact as well on residential neighborhoods. And generally, this is the area of the town where more intensive land use activities like manufacturing and processing would actually be direct within, uh, within the town. So to uh, proceed with amending the bylaw, the town would be looking at uh, introducing um, policies around permitting an intensive re resource zone in the industrial designation, as well as permitting uh, abattoirs within this zone subject to a development agreement. So essentially what it would be doing is looking at any time an abattoir was uh, proposed by an applicant, uh, it would have to go through a rezoning process and then it could be examined on a site specific basis within that industrial designated areas of town. So these are the two policies that have been drafted up to uh, to accomplish these two objectives with for the plan. So the first policy is that is a policy that within the industrial designation, councils shall permit industrial and intensive resource zones. And the second policy being it is a policy that abattoirs are only permitted in the intensive resource zone through a rezoning by development agreement. In considering a request, council shall consider the separation between residential neighborhoods methods of disposal of any non-domestic waste, health and environmental considerations. 
I've uh, highlighted the two areas within the town that have been designated uh, for industrial. So these are the two areas where potentially we could be looking at uh, entertaining these types of requests. So the, the map on the left is our active industrial area. Um, I've highlighted where the Public Works Department is located to help uh, everyone orient themselves. Um, again, this is that area closest to exit 506. And it is the fully serviced. We do have public roads within this area at the present time. And it's where development would be, uh, industrial development would be encouraged to be uh, located. The map on the right is the undeveloped future industrial area. Um, this is set aside in at exit 500, which is the Walker Road exit. And this area is currently unserviced, but it was uh, designated uh, several years back mainly to uh, allow for that future growth of uh, industrial development within the town. So again, I'll just kind of reiterate that this is the public presentation, which is that formal announcement of council considering the amendment to the municipal plan. Uh, ads have been uh, published uh, on the town's website, uh, setting this as the public presentation, as well as uh, beginning to engage the public with submitting uh, written comments. And the next step, of course, will be the public hearing, which gives the public actually the opportunity to speak regarding the proposed amendments. And this will be held on November 9th at uh, 7 p.m. in a virtual council meeting. And that concludes the public presentation. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bickford, are there any questions? Okay, does council have any questions of uh, Ms. Pickford? None? Okay. Um, we'll move on then to the application for rezoning on Reservoir Road. Ms. Pickford okay. again. <laughs> I will uh, just share my screen now again. So staff have received uh, an application uh, regarding a proposed map amendment to both the municipal plan and the zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, so keeping in mind that same industrial area that we just talked about, uh, or the industrial designation in the previous uh, presentation, this actual request is looking at that uh, area that's the undeveloped industrial. And the proposal is actually to rezone a portion of that uh, the property at the end of Reservoir Road from industrial to rural residential. So the map on the left again is that Walker Road um, industrial designated area. This area was designated back in 2009 and it was recognized during that plan review process that the industrial park at exit 506 was nearing capacity as well as there was limited potential for further expansion mainly due to the the rest of the town had developed around it. We've got residential close by in our downtown area. Um, so at that time, uh, this area uh, up at the exit 500 was looked at as being a prime area in town where there was limited development already occurring. Uh, it had good highway visibility, as well as it had direct access to the Trans-Canada Highway. And it was uh, seen as all positive aspects to creating this area as um, a future industrial area. Um, and there was approximately 206 acres in that, uh, that location that was accessible. Um, to put that into perspective, approximately 140 acres is in the current uh, industrial area. The, the property that we're looking at though, highlighted in yellow is actually the applicant's uh, property that, that's uh, under consideration. So it's a total of about 84 acres, but he is actually looking at the lower par portion at the end of Reservoir Road, which is uh, highlighted in the dashed red line. It's about 24 acres. And the, pro the property has been in his ownership since a since the 1980s, and prior to that, it was actually a family-owned property. 
Um, and his intention all along has always been to return to town and to eventually build his house on this particular property. The 24 acres, he has indicated that the reason why he's he's looking at that particular size of property is it allows him to, to maintain his own personal buffer should that area develop as an industrial in the future, as well as um, it allows him to uh, have some flexibility on where his house uh, would be located on the property. The other thing that he was kind of looking at was the clear distinction of how he could locate where that zone is. So you'll see um, in the northern corner, it does uh, follow property lines to some degree, although this property will all remain as one single property at this time. So the photo on the left is the frontage of the property on Reservoir Road. You'll notice that this is primarily a vacant uh, wooded land. Uh, there are some uh, blueberries though that are uh, growing on the property as well. The property or the photo on the right is a view looking from Ogden Mill up Reservoir Road and you can see that Reservoir Road is primarily a resident a rural residential uh, development and that the road was designed accordingly. So it is a dead-end street and it is it was never the intention when uh, we set out to pre-designate that area as industrial off Walker Road, that Reservoir Road would be used as an entrance or an exit for that future, um, future industrial area due to the design of that road. So in the course of, of steps for this particular proposal, council will uh, see a resolution come forward next, like, next meeting and if they're interested in entertaining this particular amendment um, to both the municipal plan from the future land use map. So it would look at taking that uh, bottom portion out that identified and creating it or and making it uh, rural residential, leaving the remaining industrial. And then they would be doing a very similar situation with the rezoning on the zoning map. So we would be looking at replicating that as well. Council's not inter interested in entertaining this particular amendment, uh, they can choose, of course, not to enter into the, the resolution next week. And that concludes the overall discussion of that. Are there any questions on this uh, presentation? Uh, Councillor Michel. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I guess, uh, my question is in that area i mean it's been some time now since um, that was adapted into the municipal plan uh, are there other areas within this uh, that the planning commission is maybe seeing as becoming more uh, for residential use um, you know so now now there's a, a a chunk of this property gone i mean the person owns the entire piece of property um, however that in itself may limit development of that property, right? If that person doesn't want a certain type of business around their, where their house is. I'm um, just kind of wondering um, if the Planning Commission has seen any other inquiries, foresee any other uh, type of requests of this nature coming forward that would impede on that area further as being the next spot for expansion in regards to uh, uh, industrial growth, I guess. Yeah, so at this present time, of course, this is the only uh, the only property that has shown any kind of interest in, in doing anything of this particular nature. In this, although we haven't officially started the process, I will say that, you know, one of the things that looks at this particular property is that location access right off Reservoir Road. So, you know, recognizing that we would never really want to uh, in, or well, we never really intended for industrial to come off that particular road anyway. Um, that's why this one at this time is is not uh, an unreasonable request. Um, looking at some of those other larger parcels, um, you know, there may be a very different uh, view of it at that time. Um, but this still also leaves approximately 60 acres left as industrial area. So we're still not uh we still have a large sizable uh industrial area left 
that could potentially be developed up there once services are extended. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Evans. Yes, just to clarify, uh, unlike our current industrial park, which was owned by the town, the land was owned by the town and we, we sold it off. The land up there, which is designated industrial, is it correct that it is all owned by private individuals? The town does not own any of it currently? You are correct. They're all private. Okay. Yeah. And there has been no great rush to develop this area. So this was done in anticipation of requiring land. If somebody wanted land already designated industrial, they could use it. But this is land that is that he owns and he wants to develop it in a certain way. And uh, uh, I just want to clarify that this strikes me as very reasonable. And as I say, every time we this is presented to us, it would have to be a really terrible idea to me to vote against starting the process to consider it. So um, thank you for clarifying this. And I see no such objection. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you, Ms. Pickford. And we'll now move on to item three, uh, the LED digital sign at the Civic Center. Mr. Acton. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, as Council probably remembers, uh, back during the budget time, uh, during the uh, budget, uh, uh, process for uh, 2020, um, Council approved the um, the replacement of the vet Tantamar Veterans Memorial Civic Center signboard to, uh, to a new LED uh, digital signboard. So as part of this process, uh, we worked to uh, put together uh, an RFQ uh, for the new digital sign um, with minimum requirements, all the deliverables, uh, specifications and details around the RFQ. And we developed uh, the request for uh, an invited request for quotation 2020-1313. Uh, and we invited uh, one local uh, company uh, and three of the large uh, sign companies out of Moncton um, we, uh, for the uh, invited uh, RFQ. And when we closed the RFQ, um, uh, the 2020-13 on September the 24th, we received uh, the following uh, four bids uh, for this um, invited RFQ. Troop Signs out of Sackville, Hanson Signs out of Moncton, Signway Limited out of Moncton, and Geno Signs out of Moncton, New Brunswick. Um, all bids were uh, fairly competitive, um, and the low bid, of course, uh, came from Geno Signs uh, at a low bid of uh, $34,055.49, HST included. Um, Council in their package would have seen that the uh, the budget information for this uh, um, this item um, the budget was thirty three thousand and eighty two dollars and ten cents HST included. So you can see we're relatively on budget, at, uh, slightly over about a th just under a thousand dollars. And again, um, we would recommend um, that Council award the. RFQ 2020-13 for the LED digital sign board um, for the Tantamar's Veteran Memorial Civic Center to the low bid of Juno Signs uh, out of Moncton for the uh, for that low bid, uh, and there would be a motion coming forward, um, Your Honor, next uh, Monday night during the uh, regular council meeting. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Duane. Are there any questions, Councillor Michel? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, my only question is, um, so this was a request for quotes. So are we obligated to take the uh, least uh, amount quoted of uh, all the folks who were approached? Thank you, Councillor Michaud. Um, it tip typically has been our uh, our um, process and our policy to, to do that. Um, again, it's, uh, it is a request for quotes, but it was, uh, it was done similar to um, uh, Tim to a tender where they, they submitted their bids um, to a tender box or RFQ box. Um, it was opened uh, as a public opening 
um, and um, typically we would um, uh, honor the low quote on on uh, any of our uh, tenders slash uh, requests for quotes uh, and uh, Requests for proposals obviously are done a little different where we evaluate based on different criteria, but that was not the case uh, in this uh, this particular uh, project. Uh, I, I guess the, the thing is, is that we're we're uh, I just wanted to get some clarity around that because I mean, we, we have a local company there that's uh, provided a, a, a bid. It's I know it's, you know, I guess over the budget amount, maybe four and a half uh, thousand or you know four forty five hundred bucks um, a little bit high here um, I'm just kind of wondering um, what legal obligation we would have or if there would be an issue if we uh, chose not to go with the low lowest quote as opposed to a lowest tender I guess well uh that uh, if you're asking for my recommendation, I've given my recommendation and is to go with the low quote. Uh, again, it was everyone was on equal playing field. Uh, they had specifications that they all had to meet. Um, and um, again, it's uh, it is uh, when you do the the math, uh, the treasurer may be able to do it quicker than I I can, but the percentage is 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 quite a bit higher. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Uh, Councillor Evans. One of the constant challenges we get when we ask for people to bid on projects is to get a significant number of bids. One surefire way to get people to not bid would be if we didn't honour the lowest bid. Um, I am sympathetic. We all would love to have local people be successful. But uh, I've asked this question early on in my tenure on council about doing something like that. But if we were to not honor the lowest bid, I think companies that are in business would start to not bother bidding on our projects and we would then be stuck with very few tenders or people offering on them. So I think this is an established practice for good reasons and I support it. Thank you. Councilor Thank you, Your Worship, if I could. Sorry, uh, Mr. Acton. Sorry, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to kind of uh, reiterate uh, what uh, Councillor Evans said, and and uh, I know that we uh, I wasn't with the town at the time, but we um, had gone against a, a low bid. I know it was a tender um, in the past, and uh, we were taken to court, and I believe the town lost uh, that court case. In which case, we had to pay um, the low contractor um, some 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 settlement. Thank you. Councilor Michaud. Thank you, I guess, uh, as follow up. I, I, just, I again, I just looking for clarity because ultimately we made a decision um, in regards to road salt that went to a higher price firm. So um, I'm just kind of wondering how it is in that case. Um, we made the decision to go with a higher price um not fearing any ramifications um however in this case um there might be concern your worship if i could um i, I see them as two different uh, situations the situation with the salt was um we had a long-standing relationship with uh, a contractor that neither of them were, were local contractors um, the salt from uh, the competitor is up in the air right now with not sure whether they're going to be able to provide salt in the future. Uh, and I guess it was uh, it was my recommendation that we would stay with the company that we have a long standing relationship with um, and had good service, uh, good quality salt from. Um, neither of them were low, low, low local bidders um, and that was the reason those are the reasons for going with the salt. Okay, thank you, Mr. Acton. Are there any more questions? Okay, we'll move on um, to policy bylaw and uh, Ms. Goodwin. Thank you, Your Worship, members of council. The BIA imposes a levy of assessment on all business properties within the area described in our bylaw number 128. Bylaw 128 has been in effect every year subsequent to 1987 
and annually a revised bylaw relating to establishing a special business improvement area levy comes forward in order to establish the rates for the upcoming year. Assessments for business properties within the BAA area are provided for uh, provided to us by the province. Once those are received, Section 2 of the levy bylaw will be updated to reflect the proceeds of the levy. It would be our recommendation, as in previous years, that Council give first and second reading to bylaw 277, a bylaw, bylaw relating to establishment of a business, a special business improvement area levy in the town of Sackville at our next regular council meeting of October 13th. All right, thank you. Are there any questions on that? Okay, Ms. Pickford, or oh, sorry, <laughs> Ms. Goodwin next. Yes, um, so staff are looking to have three policies repealed solely for housekeeping purposes. So the first one would be policy 2017-03, the heritage grant criteria policy, which was passed in 2017. The policy refers to the heritage uh, conservation bylaw, which is no longer in effect. The next one, uh, in March 2020, council gave third and final reading to bylaw number 271, a bylaw relating to establishing a code of conduct for members of council. Um, this bylaw supersedes the Town of Sackville's Code of Conduct for Elected Officials policy. And the third, uh, in 1998, the inventory control policy was passed by Council. And then in 2007, Council passed the accounts payable processing policy, which supersedes the inventory control policy. So it'd be our recommendation that at our next regular Council meeting, that Council would repeal these three policies. Thank you, Ms. Goodwin. Any questions? And I understand those will all be repealed in one policy or one motion. I'm sorry. That is correct, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Finney. Yeah, I have to unmute Councillor Finney. The, the policy that was in place before the one in March. Who was that? I guess uh, who was the one that would probably, if there was somebody out of line, who would be turning around investigating that at that time? That policy that was in place then was it council the same as this one, or was it recommended that there would be an outside investigator? I'd have to refer to the policy, uh, Councillor Finney. I can do that and. Get back to you. I appreciate that. Thank sure. you. Yes. Are there any more questions? You still have your hand up, Councillor Finney. Did you have something else or? No, that's all, Your Worship. Thank you. Excuse, Thank you. Me, your wor excuse me, Your Worship, if I may. Yes. The code of conduct policy that was in place. If I just may read a short piece, it says any reported violation of the code will be subject to investigation by. The Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Veal. OK, uh, next uh, early morning weekend ice rates, Mr. Acton. Thank you again, uh, Your Worship. Um, over the last uh, number of years um, um, at the Veterans uh, Civic Center, uh, we've been um, we've not been successful in, in renting the early ice time uh, from 630 to 730 time slot on both Sunday, or sorry, Saturday and Sunday mornings. Um, uh, this this current uh, the current rate for those uh, 630 to 730 on Saturday and Sundays has been considered uh, prime time. Uh, I know for myself, um, that's definitely not prime time. Um, so as, as a part of this, um, we, we, were, we were feeling that uh, if we were able to uh, change this time slot to non-prime time, that uh, it would become more attractive for minor hockey or some of the other uh, groups to be able to uh, rent this ice time. Um, at the non prime time rate and obviously it's it's a profit that we we currently are not getting because no one's renting that time slot right now 
Um, and uh, in order to do that, um, the fee schedule would need to be amended. And that's the reason that we were wanting to bring this forward to council to see if council um, has wishes to, to change this time slot um, at 6.30 to 7.30 on Saturday and Sunday to non prime time. And that would be, I believe, uh, 90, uh, $93 uh, would be the non prime time rate. And again, we, we feel this will, will, one, we'll be able to rent the space, and two, it'll help out uh, the minor hockey or some of the other groups um, with that uh, lower, uh, uh, lower rate for ice time uh, during that. And uh, let's face it, it's a little easier for moms and dads to, to, to get them off to those early mornings on Saturday and Sunday where they don't have to go to work afterwards. So I, I think it's uh, something that would be very worthwhile in doing. And uh, again, it would be our recommendation that uh, we would uh, amend the fee schedule to, to include these two uh, time slots as non-prime time rate. And we would be looking to bring a, a motion forward uh, next, uh, uh, next uh, regular council meeting next Monday night. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Acton. Councillor Evans. Yes, at our um, uh, special meeting where uh, groups from town made presentations to council prior to our budget process, we had two presentations from groups that rent time at the rink and they are feeling the pinch. And so this is a nice way to make uh, the ice service available at a reduced rate. The, you trade off the convenience uh, of time for a, a reduced fee. So I think this is this not only perhaps will get more people using the rink because he said this is a time that the rink is tends not to be used, but it also is in a way it is a way for these groups to rent ice uh, at a reduced rate. So I like this idea. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, uh, next up is the business survey results of Mr. Kelly Spurls. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council. Um, this is essentially uh, an information um, item. I'm going to go through uh, some uh, feedback or some of the results of our business uh, survey and uh, some of the things that we're trying to do to uh, address the uh, results of the survey. And then I'd be glad to hear any comments or discussion, of course, from uh, from Council. Um, as we know, the COVID outbreak continues to evolve and the town recognizes that the pandemic is uh, going to have a lasting ec economic impact on uh, local businesses and, and local uh, residents and workers as well. So with that in mind, following the June 22nd um, Council meeting where relief measures were discussed, we created an online survey to give us a better understanding of how COVID-19 has impacted local businesses and how we could best support them in these challenging times. Uh, the survey was on for 10 days on SurveyMonkey, closing on July 30th. We had 45 respondents from a variety of sectors, including lodging, uh, nonprofit community, professional services, restaurant, bar, retail, music festival, banking, uh, seasonal celebrations, Parks Canada Agency, real estate sales, construction, Grocery, arts and culture, brewery, tap room, craft alcohol sales, massage therapy, naturopathic clinic, travel and the arts. And I, I went through that whole list just because I thought it was important to mention um, all the different types of businesses that we had that participated in the survey. Um, in our report, I provided a detailed uh, summary of the survey answers, but some of the highlights uh, and some of our plans for dealing with the highlights include, um, number one, people would like some funding for PPE and or for businesses who want to pivot and um, an emergency fund was also mentioned uh, so it was noted that renaissance sackville funding could be explained and promoted more so there's a couple of things on that front uh, one of them is renaissance sackville has recently sent out a call for applications for funding and i know that they would uh, consider things for for both of those topics as well uh, just recently the cbdc has uh, in fact just today has sent out information about a new program called the Canada United Small Business Fund, and uh, that program is specifically uh, targeted towards uh, towards PPE. Um, I'd be glad to uh, provide anybody who would want information on uh, that program, uh, contact information or where to find it, but it, it could be found by um, searching CBDC in the Canada United Small Business Fund. Um, the second item that was brought up was people are concerned about the border checkpoints and it's costing business. 
Uh, our response as of a few days ago was uh, this has been highlighted and discussed by the mayors of Sackville and Amherst. We will keep looking for opportunities to address it, and I'm sure as everybody knows uh, that uh, checkpoint, at least the part coming into New Brunswick, is being lifted on October 8th, so that problem actually has been resolved. Um, several people ask for masks to be mandatory, and this was previously discussed by Council, and we have made masks mandatory in town buildings, which we believe uh, provides leadership and an example that hopefully others will follow. And of course, there's also talk of masks becoming mandatory in the province uh, relatively soon. Uh, a shop local campaign was encouraged. Uh, we've taken a number of uh, front, uh, initiatives on this front. We have 23 plus partners with our, our business passport, which is I went out um, in uh, August. It was given out to all of the incoming Mount A students and uh, it's been distributed around town. We've had a lot of positive uh, feedback on that. Uh, as you may probably know with that passport, um, if you go around to a business in town, you get them to stamp it. Uh, spend more than $10, and if you get more than 10 stamps, you can come back to town and get a free t-shirt and be entered in a contest. Um, we have a new Sackville.com explore page with an emphasis on local businesses. Uh, we're working on the possibility of another passport in collaboration with the uh, BIA Main Street organization, and we're also helping them with uh, Moonlight Madness and other programs. We're supporting the establishment of a Chamber of Commerce branch. Uh, we're exploring an online shopping mall type um, uh, site for local businesses and we're also offering to support uh, pa package creation for local businesses. If any businesses want to create a package together, we will uh, pay for the design of their ads, uh, help promote it, and we'll uh, promote it through our, our, our means as well, through social media and website and so on. Um, it was mentioned this could be a long-term issue. This is not item five in the uh, highlights and we need to think long-term, not just short-term. And we are continuing to plan with council and among uh, staff and managers. And we've also started uh, monthly meetings with local businesses, which will be the last Tuesday of every month. Um, number six was a focus on helping focus on helping businesses learn <clears throat> how to change or how to keep going under these circumstances was suggested. We've seen a number of workshops advertised uh, on that subject. Uh, there hasn't been one held for specifically for Sackville businesses yet that we're aware of. So we're going to uh, look at searching out somebody who would be able to do that sort of a workshop for Sackville businesses. And uh, number seven item, uh, the highlights, the last highlight item was it was suggested in the town could take a leadership role in leveraging community held assets. Uh, not necessarily those of struggling businesses, but of community members to help local businesses stay open. This is, could be done through investment vehicles such as community economic development cooperatives or other such avenues. Um, when I wrote this report um, last week, this was an idea that um, uh, we weren't really sure uh, that was, this was something that the town could do or we weren't really sure if anyone else was doing it. In the interim, uh, I have had a discussion with Wendy Keats of the um, Cooperative Enterprise Council of New Brunswick, and uh, it turns out that they are doing almost exactly this type of a program, and they're just about to launch it. Uh, it will be a uh, community economic investment fund, and there's an organization called the Grassroots Community Economic Investment Fund that are working with them uh, to launch this. So if any uh, business is interested in possibly uh, getting investment from this fund, or anybody is interested in investing in this fund, uh, they can contact uh, Wendy Keats. And uh, if you contact me, I will uh, forward her, your, her email to you or I will connect you with her and uh, she'll put you on the list of people to get information as soon as that fund is active, which should be very soon. Um, so those were the things that we identified as the highlights of the survey and the uh, things we've been working on to try to address them. We are continually um, looking for, for new ideas. We, of course, as everybody understands, we have you know somewhat limited resources. Our staff is quite busy. Um, we don't have a, a huge budget, but we are working very hard to try every way we can to support local businesses and to support um, people as to try to get through this difficult period. So uh, I'd be glad to answer any, any questions that anybody might have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kelly Spurls. Um, I had one question, the um, Explore Sackville page. Uh, that is that sort of virtual shopping mall? No, this is a new page that is um, for, uh, there's a, two, two different things. The Explore Sackville page is a new landing page for visitors. So um, it's, we haven't, uh, we're, we're just in the process now of kind of getting, it was launched I think about a week ago. So we're in the process now of kind of spreading the word about it. But basically if you do uh, sackville.com slash explore, you'll come to that new page. So it's a new landing page and it has, a uh, whole bunch of really local things on it, like uh, uh, walking tours, uh, highlighting local businesses, 
that sort of thing. So okay, thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Councilor Evans. Not a question, just a comment. I was delighted to see uh, these initiatives, and I was pleased to see the number and variety of the responses. So well done. Thank you. Anyone else? OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, uh, Bunker Gear and Chief Bowser. Thank you, Your Worship, members of Council. Um, as recently as part of our uh, biannual advanced inspection and cleaning of our bunker gear, it was identified that two of our sets did not pass the advanced NFPA inspection and needed to be removed from service, and we would be looking to somehow replace those. In speaking with the technician, he indicated that the gear did not pass due to the sunlight, the ultraviolet ray damage that was coming through the glass on the apparatus bay doors and had ruined the physical integrity of the outer shell of the bunker gear. This said, after speaking with our supplier of our current bunker gear, he indicated that he knows one other department within our coverage area, or sure, pardon me, within our area, that has also had to alter their windows within their apparatus bays with a tint covering to reduce the ultraviolet impact and reduce the sunlight exposure within the gear rack area. This said, I've spoke with that chief and uh, am doing a review of what is required to reduce the exposure moving forward and to minimize the impact of any further bunker gear from being exposed to UV impact. Uh, and we will look to have a motion of council uh, on October 13th to purchase two sets of bunker gear to replace those two sets that have been taken out of service um, and they held the price that we awarded five sets earlier this year for $2,822 a set plus HST for a total purchase of $6,490.60. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? Councilor Evans. I can't help but notice that this uh, PPE, which uh, uh, the meaning of which is known to all of us nowadays, uh, this is the second time, so first of all, this stuff is so important for protecting firefighters, and yet this is the second time we've had to deal with protecting the equipment while it's in storage. You had a, a leak of some kind that was causing it to deteriorate, and now it's sunlight. So uh, it's kind of ironic that the stuff that's so good at protecting firefighters needs protection when it's off duty. Anyway, I'll support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Michaud? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I have a, a few questions, actually, um, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll do them individually. That way, just uh, uh, look for the responses there. So, this the biannual inspection cleaning. Who conducts this uh, for the municipality, and how long have they been doing that? So, Clean Heroes out of Nova Scotia is the company that's uh, been doing the inspection, and they've been doing it probably for the last year. Uh, and prior to that, any gear that was uh, considered damaged or of a concern, or if they had holes, they would be sent to Atlantic Bunker Gear in Nova Scotia to be inspected and uh, repaired and sent back to us. And how old are these two sets that have to be replaced at this point in time? These two sets, both of them are 2012 sets of gear. Um, and um, so they've been exposed to this, uh, these sun rays or whatever since 2012. What, um, uh, what concern is there of other equipment? Like how many other uh, sets of bunker gear might be at risk here due to this? So in speaking with uh, the technician from Clean Heroes, he alluded to that all, uh, he has no concerns with the rest of the gear at the present. Those two sets of gear sit at the very front end of the gear rack uh, in the apparatus bay. So they are extremely exposed to sunlight, but however, there is three or four other sets of gear down the rack that uh, we do notice some ultraviolet impact to, but the outer physical integrity of them has still been maintained and still have passed to this day with no concern. And uh, my last question is, I guess, as the design was being looked at for the fire station component of town hall, was this a factor that might have been um, overlooked in the fact of where these this uh, bunker gear is kept in conjunction to the the bay doors and the windows? Um, that's a very good question, 
Councillor Michaud, but however, I can't answer that because I was not involved in that side of the uh, design phase. And uh, just as a follow up, I know one thing that um, I have heard about over the years just uh, is exhaust um, is exhaust venting. Uh, and this is totally something separate, but I guess when we're talking about personal equipment and safety, um, when the vehicles are operating or started uh, within the bay, um, what type of exhaust venting is there in place to ensure that those fumes are, are vented out and uh, aren't causing any sort of uh, harm to uh, personnel? So as part of the design phase of the building, um, there's two different types of systems that can be put into fire halls um, within the apparatus bays. One is a Niederman system that the hose connects directly to the exhaust of the unit and it dis discharges on the unit when it goes out the door at the end of the track. Uh, what we have in place is what we call an airmation system, um, which exhausts their big units at the top of the apparatus bay. And I believe there's five to seven of those units uh, which exhaust the minute the door goes up, those exhaust hoods stay on and they exhaust all the carcinogens and exhaust that was been disposed of in the bay or discharged from the apparatus, pardon me. And then when those garage doors come back down after the rigs return, those units stay on for 15 minutes as well to continue to off gas anything that uh, has returned to the station that may or may not have been exposed. Great, thanks very much. Thank you, Chief Bowser. Are there any more questions? Councillor Finney. Craig, can you tell me, as a matter of fact, are we going to be putting tinting on that glass so that won't happen again? So yes, we, are, we have reached out to one company for sure to date, uh, and they are coming in to look at it possibly this week um, to review to see what is needed. Um, but there will, it's nothing that's been budgeted for. So it will be an additional expense that will be coming forward to council in the very near future for consideration. And the other question I have for you, the life lifetime of these suits is what, 10 years? And then they have to be changed? 10 years, that is correct. So we've gotten eight years out of them anyway. So they would have been coming up pretty soon with the, it's a shame it had to come now, but we're lucky we got eight and not the 10. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you lower your hand? Thank you. Okay, any more questions for Chief Bowser? Okay, we'll move to the 15-minute uh, question period. Now, um, remind the public, if you wish to ask a question, hit the raise hand button function on the uh, bar at the bottom of the screen here. And uh, when I acknowledge you, turn your camera on and unmute your mic and ask a question. And to remind you, the questions are should be about what we discussed tonight, what has been presented. Okay, are there any questions from the public? Uh, Ms. Landon, Laura Landon, please. Um, yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor. It's Bruce Wark here, uh, signed in under Laura's name. I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one has to do with the um, Sackville Heritage Grant policy that you're going to rescind. Um, what will be in place? Does Sackville have anything in place to encourage the preservation of uh, heritage buildings in this town? That's my first question. Okay, um, I think I'll refer that to uh, Mr. Burke. Yeah, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor Aiken, and um, thanks for the question, um, Bruce. We have a zoning bylaw in place with which provides some, um, you know, very kind of elementary um, requirements where somebody at least needs a permit if they're if they're going to demolish a building. But um, that would be that would really be the the extent of the um, level of. Um, some time ago, as you know, council made a, a decision to repeal um, the heritage bylaw um, and dissolve the heritage board board of the day. Um, that um, kind of legal process has never been reevaluated or reintroduced. So that really in New Brunswick is the is the level of protection um, under applicable legislation to protect heritage properties in the in the municipality. Thank you. Um, I guess my question was more toward the 
encouragement of the preservation of heritage, which the grant policy did. Um, I know there, the, the protections are gone, um, but there seems to be nothing there to encourage people, I guess, in the former conservation zones to protect or to uh, preserve the heritage of those buildings. So the, I guess the t town, seem, if I'm correct, seems to have washed its hands completely of the preservation of heritage and encouraging uh, homeowners or building owners to preserve heritage. But I'm not sure if I'm right about that. Yeah, Mr. Burke. Yeah, th <clears throat> thank you, um, Your Worship. And thanks again, Bruce. Um, I, I wouldn't say that's entirely true. Um, our strategic plan um, does um, <clears throat> talk about heritage uh, protection. One of the things that we we agreed to do um, uh, in, in, in this year was to kind of reevaluate the heritage grant program. And while the bylaw and heritage zones may no longer exist, um, the, the Local Governance Act does allow council to issue uh, grants, albeit those grants need to be reported annually in our annual report. So the idea was always that we would, um, the, the bylaw and uh, corresponding zones would no longer exist and the board would no longer exist, but that a new kind of program would be, would be introduced. Um, as you know, we've, we've been focused on other things um, since, since March, so um, that is something that is on our radar. Um, th those funds were carried through in our 2020 budget, and um, you know we would expect to see them again in the 2021 budget, which would be subject to council approval. Thank you. Uh, and my second question has to do with the results of the business survey. Uh, would it be possible to get a copy uh, of that of those highlights or the results of that survey? Uh, hard to write a story just on the verbal presentation tonight. Uh, Mr. Kelly Spurls? Uh, I guess I would defer to Mr. Burke about what we're able to uh, release publicly. Uh, Deputy Mayor, if I can. Sure. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah thanks, Bruce. Um, we, sure, we, we can make the uh, the results available. Um, we, we can't release, obviously, the, the name of the individual who made certain uh, certain comments, but certainly the summary of the um, the items that uh, Mr. Kelly Sprills outlined today, is, that's definitely something that we can share. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, thank you, Bruce. Are there any more questions from the public? I have a question. Butler. Yes, hi, sorry. I can find the, hand, the raise hand function on my phone here. Um, <laughs> in terms of adaptation funding for local businesses um, in light of COVID, uh, I believe you mentioned Re Renaissance Sackville would be the way to distribute that help. Um, so, and they've put out a call recently. I'm wondering if council or staff are giving consideration to additional funding for Renaissance Sackville since they have sort of a regular amount in a normal year, what they do um, for local businesses. And this is, as we know, sort of a special year and could be a special couple of years for local businesses. So I'm wondering, if there is further discussion now that we know there is some funding needs, will that be on up for discussion again? Uh, Mr. Burke. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And thanks, um, Erica, for the question. Um, I guess right now uh, within our existing operational budget, uh, Renaissance Actville uh, has $25,000 allocated. So in, in the, the previous motion that um, council authorized that transferred some money to Renaissance to um, accommodate several grant requests, um, it was outlined to Renaissance that I guess final approval of, um, of grant applications would, would rest with council. So what would end up happening is that um, a local business um, could make an application to Renaissance. Renaissance would adjudicate, re review the application and um, then provide a recommendation back to council on the, on the grant. And then council would end up releasing the releasing the funds. So right now there's there's twenty five thousand um, dollars in our existing 2020 budget. So um, that should be enough, I would think, to get us through the um, the end of the year. But certainly um, um, giving further contemplation to Renaissance in 2021 is an item the council will consider as part of the 2021 budget process. Okay, but that so but but twenty five thousand a year is the normal is i'm 
can I understand that 25,000 is the normal yearly expected budget for Renaissance Sackville? And so that won't change this year. Yeah, Mr. Burke? Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mary. And thanks, Erica. Um, <clears throat> that, that's correct. I would think at the at the present time, um, and, and you're, you're, you're absolutely right, $25,000 is the, the typical kind of a lot of provided to Renaissance. Um, however, I guess there, there's nothing preventing council from entertaining, um, you know, if just in terms of a hypothetical situation, in the event that Renaissance's latest call was, you know, wildly successful and they needed more than the $25,000 by November 1st, um, council could very well uh, contemplate um, some additional money within the 2020 budget to transfer to them. Okay, all right. Um, and just one quick question regarding the 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 ice fees. Um, we don't have the any reports or anything to refer to, so it's hard to catch what's going on in this discussion meeting sometimes. What was the percentage uh, discount for that was being offered? Like in a percentage, if if we could, yeah. The, what is the discount from sort of the normal fees? Uh, Mr. Acton. Um, yes, thank you, Your Worship, um, and thank you, Erica. Um, the 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 normal fee for um, a prime time ice is one hundred and fifty five dollars. And that would drop to a non uh, prime ice time of ninety three dollars. OK, all okay. right, thank, thank about you. About 60, you know, 60 some dollars difference. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Erica. Are right, there any more questions from the public? OK, seeing none. Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, for council to go in camera. I move that council move into camera. Thank you, Council Carter. I have a seconder. I'll second that, Councillor Butcher. Thank you, Councillor Butcher. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Okay, we're we're moving. We're moving into uh, uh, into in camera. I'll ask the members of the public to uh, uh, leave the meeting now. Just hang, use a little hang up button on the left hand side of your um, or the right hand side of the bar.